Hello sophomores, this is Father Manco, and I'm going to do a quick video for you here on the seal of confession, which is a topic a lot of people have asked about. So first, let's start with what is the seal? And the seal refers to the obligation of priests not to reveal anything made known in confession. So the catechism will talk about a penitent sins being sealed, quote unquote, by the sacrament. Specifically, canon law uh, says the sacramental seal is inviolable, therefore it is absolutely forbidden for a confessor to betray in any way a penitent in words or in any manner and for any reason. So there are absolutely no exceptions to this. And when it says betray a penitent in any manner, that means, you know, even if I don't use words, I can't use uh, hand signals, uh, smoke signals, signal flares, uh, I can't change my behavior in such a way that would signal to other people that there was something I knew about you um, that would, uh, especially about your sin. And uh, no matter what the danger to the priest is or to anyone else, uh, none of those qualify as a reason for revealing what is heard in confession. And we'll talk about that a little more in a second. So what happens when the seal is broken? Canon law says, a confessor who directly violates the sacramental seal incurs a late sententiae excommunication reserved to the apostolic see. An excommunication, it's what's called a medicinal penalty. So it's given by the church in order to bring someone back to repentance because they've done something really bad. And uh, excommunication uh, means you're out of out of communion. You're out of communication with the church, so you're no longer one with her. Because remember, at the heart of communication is uh, the, the word one, unus in Latin, uni. So it's one. And so we're no longer one together. That means that a person is excommunicated, does not benefit from prayers made for the church, cannot participate in the church's liturgy, and cannot receive any of the sacraments or hold an office in the church. Uh, like archbishop. So and if an archbishop um, is excommunicated, he loses his power. And when we say reserved to the apostolic see, certain sins, any basically any priest can forgive. But other sins are reserved either to the local bishop or for a very, very, very few select number of sins. They are reserved to the apostolic see, which means they're so bad only the pope uh, can forgive them. And it's also, it's a check because you don't want um, uh, a bishop covering up for a priest. Like something of, of this seriousness is something that we remove from a local situation and send right to Rome, to the apostolic see. Okay. So why have the seal of confession? Well, as most of you can probably figure out, that few people would approach the sacrament of confession and be totally honest if they thought the priest could gab about it to others. And it also, especially the penalties that are set up, are meant to prevent priests from using the knowledge they have for evil or nefarious purposes, like blackmail. Or, you know, if a CEO of a company comes to me and confesses that he's been cooking the books, I can't, you know, uh, go out and sell all my stock in that company, or uh, better yet, uh, <laughs> uh, sell it short, uh, which means doing something and, and hoping that it goes down and making money off of that. So I can't use that money for personal gain. Um, finally, and I think the most important aspect is that a priest only knows the information that he has because of his relationship to God as a minister of God's mercy. A priest is not particularly trusted with this information because Maybe the person, you know, uh, thinks, oh, you know, Father Manco, he's a very reliable person. He would never betray it. No. The reason you give your sins to a priest is so that he can forgive them. That's why people tell their, their sins to the priest, because they want them wiped away. And, you know, in a sense, only God can forgive sins, but he can forgive through his ministers. And so in this very uh, privileged moment of confession... You don't want um, the, the priest has to remember that he's not being this, given this information as a mere mortal, but as an instrument of God. Now there's the objection, well, what about justice? You know, what if the priest knows something bad is going to happen 
you know, or you know someone has done a lot of other bad things, like a serial killer, and could save some lives. Well, a couple of things. First of all, the basic idea is that what's going on in a confession is more important than any of those other considerations. And this is not an idea exclusive to the church. We see this even in U.S. law, that the way the Constitution is set up, certain uh, higher goods mean that we tolerate certain evils. So Article 1, Section 6 says that senators and representatives um, for any speech or debate in either house shall not be questioned in any other place. So normally, if I say, if I make up a story about one of you kids and I go blabbing it about, um, you know, you could sue me for slander because I've damaged your reputation. But if I were a senator and I did it on the floor of the United States Senate, you couldn't sue me because nothing that is said on the floor of the Senate can be um, held to account anywhere else. Only the Senate could punish that kind of violation. And that means that sometimes injustices are done. You know, a person could reveal national, national security secrets on the floor of the Senate. And you know what, there's nothing, there's nothing that could be done about that to punish them. Um, so, and, and the reason for this is we need free debate. If people are worried that, um, that they're going to be punished legally for what they say in the House or the Senate, they may not be honest in what they're saying. And honesty is crucial to the debate that these two bodies need for their, um, for their work to go forward. So in our system, we say, well, you know what? Yes, some injustice might happen, but it's worth it. Because the House of Representatives and the Senate functioning is a more important goal than whatever the individual injustices are. Also, the executive has a similar thing. Now, this isn't explicitly in the Constitution, but it's kind of implied, and that's what the courts have said. Uh, some traces back to the privilege of the British Crown to receive counsel, and that if the president can't get confidential counsel uh, from those around him, then they're, they may not they may not be honest, and the president needs honest advice. So that's an issue that came up in U.S. versus Nixon. Uh, in, in Watergate. And the court affirmed there, there was at least some, um, there was a real claim of executive privilege. Now, it didn't save Nixon, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, but it is something real, and that's important for the, for the executive to do his job. Well, what about, what about preventing nuclear war, Father? Come on, what if all the people on Earth were going to die? All right, fine. If you want to do some utilitarian calculation, Assume there's 6 billion people on the planet, they're all going to live 70 years, and that if we drop the bombs, that's going to be 720 billion years of life that are eliminated. But 720 billion years is still a lot less than eternity, and an eternity of perfect bliss. So that's going to be 720 billion years of, eh, kind of okay life. Some will be miserable, some will be really happy, and most will be somewhere in the middle. But what's that compared to one eternity of perfect bliss for one person? seems like that's, if you're just going to put these things on a scale, that's the more important. But the deeper principle here that we see in law is that higher courts do not answer to lower courts. And the confessional is a divine court. You, the penitent, are acting as prosecutor. You're accusing yourself. So you're both the prosecutor and the defendant. The priest sits as judge. And you know, decides, are you really sorry for your sin? What penance are you going to do? And then imparts divine mercy. And what goes on in the confessional is something above and beyond ordinary human life. This is about our relationship to God himself and the pouring out of divine mercy. And no one has a right to interfere with that, not even a priest. So that is why priests are bound by the seal.